We brought you hands on of the Sony P series when we were out there in Las Vegas at CES, but we've had one in the office now for a week or so just to make sure that it really is going to be worth your £849 or more if you want to buy the more expensive one, but more on that in a minute. Okay, first impressions, they still stand. It's still a very small, very pretty device, and of course, it's got a really unique form factor. Initial worries were that it was going to be very difficult to type on, but after a couple of hours playing with it and typing on it, I can say it, after a while, you really, really do get used to it. And I think it helps that it's got kind of a MacBook style chiclet keyboard with all the gaps and uh, obviously the raised letters as well. It just work really, really well. Okay, spec wise, this one uh, here is the more expensive one at £1,300. It starts at 849 though, and on the 849 model, you get a 1.3 gigahertz processor, 2 gigs of RAM, and 60 gigabytes of hard drive space. So 849, you get a spec that's very similar to other netbooks that are actually out there, obviously much cheaper prices. This one, £1,300 though, you get GPS, you also get uh, a mobile internet slot built into uh, just under the battery, so you can pop your own SIM card in and be completely wireless and uh, obviously not shackled to a Wi-Fi network or anything like that. On both models though, you get a really, really high-res 8-inch screen. Um, and what's really good about this screen is it's actually 1600 by 786 resolution, which might not mean a lot to you, but basically if you think that the resolution across, uh, across the screen is actually the same as most 20-inch screens. So really, you do manage to get a lot of screen real estate on that tiny 8 inch screen. Okay, so the £1,300 model having GPS, mobile broadband, it also gets 1.6 gigahertz processor and 128 gigs of solid state storage. So it's quite a bump up from the cheaper model than it is £1,300. Also on that expensive model, you get eight hours of battery life, which bumps it up from the three on the cheaper model. Right, so that's all the sexy specs out of the way and all the, all the good stuff. What are the bad points? Well, to keep the keyboard small, what Sony have done is got rid of the trackpad at the front and they've actually decided to use an old style nipple in the middle of the keyboard instead, which obviously a lot of older laptops used to use uh, for navigating around Windows. And uh, the thing with this, it's really quite fiddly to use, especially if you've not used one for a while, and uh, it really is quite sensitive as well. So you're not gonna really, really want to do any kind of precision work on here, unfortunately. Also, the screen. It's great, of course, being eight inches and being like a really high resolution, but being that size and being high resolution means a lot of the fonts and, uh, and just text in your windows when you're using them looks really, really small. You really have to squint and it's not very simple to use for that reason. So it's not something you're gonna use for a long period of time. The main bad point is the fact it uses Windows Vista. Now, I'm not Windows bashing in any way, shape or form, but Windows Vista was never really designed to be running on a 1.3 gigahertz processor and kind of video card that this comes with. So it does run pretty sluggishly, even with two gigs of RAM. Even just browsing the internet, even just using Microsoft Word and things like that, it doesn't run particularly well. And if you want to do more than one thing at once, like have your email open and also Firefox or Windows Internet Explorer, something like that, it doesn't run very well at all, which is not really what you expect when you're paying 850 quid for a netbook or something like that. So what we've done is we've actually put Windows 7 on this machine here just to see if this new operating system actually does make a difference because Microsoft claim it will run much better on slower processors. And to be honest, it does. It makes a huge difference and actually makes the Sony P-Series actually really, really usable. So our suggestion at the moment, yes, it's a really great machine. It's very pretty. Yes, it's expensive, but we'd wait until Windows 7 becomes the main installation for this little machine. And then it might just become your netbook of choice.